All right, you ninny muggins. Tonight we're talking about four different kinds of vlogging lenses you can use. The, the kit lens for maximum startability and the ultra wide for maximum nice statability and finally ultra wide angle prime for supreme douchebaggery. Let's get into it. All right, so typically we all start right here, the, the kit lens, because, well, one, it, cost-wise, it's amazing because it's no extra cost. Like, typically it comes with your camera, or even if you have to add it on, it's like $100, which is usually not that much. Other great things about it is the range on the lens. Like, we could zoom in a good chunk of the way, all the way at, ooh. And then we can zoom out and go reasonably wide so it's a fairly flexible lens. So the third thing that's great about it is typically all kit lenses are image stabilized. So the lens has built-in stabilization, so when we're vlogging and moving around, it's helping, you know, take out some of that shake. And so that's, that's really nice. But let's talk about, you know, some of the cons with this lens. The first one is we're not going to get that super blurry background that the cinematic one will get. Like, if we get really close, yeah, like, the, the background starts to blur, but even if we're trying to, like, show off special objects here, as you can see, like, we got to get close, and the background kind of gets blurry, but it doesn't have that same, like, super cinematic-y feel. The last thing is really about how much light the kit lens lets in, is it's not the best at low light, especially, like, you notice, like, if we zoom in here, you're going to notice that it gets progressively darker and darker and darker and darker. And that can be a challenge depending how much vlogging you're doing. You know, kind of indoors or in places where there's not a ton of light. Kit lens. Let's talk about another kind of lens. Wow! Welcome to the modern classic, which is really the, I mean, the ultra wide angle lens. What's kind of amazing about this lens, I mean, the big thing is just how much of your world fits in. Like I'm, I'm literally a foot away from the lens and you can see my hands here and you can see the office. And you can see so much of what is going on around me. You know, the other kind of benefit byproduct of that is the wider that your lens is, the more stable that it is. So as far as like being able to walk around and vlog and talk, especially when a lens like this, the Sony 10 to 18 or the Canon 10 to 18, they're image stabilized as well. It's gonna give you kind of the most stable looking footage, but the downsides of these lenses. One can be the cost, depending on the system. Canons aren't too bad, but like the Sony ones, like $1,000 Canadian or like $800 US, and typically on other platforms too, is to make a lens that wide can cost some money. Two, you're not gonna get that super blurry background. The wider you are, the less the background blurs, and this lens isn't, isn't all that fast, which again is about how much light it lets in depending on how big the aperture is, which is kind of the third downside of it is, you're gonna have to crank your ISO up a bit because usually they're F4, F4.5, and kind of upwards, and so keep that in mind. But this is going to give you that classic Casey Neistat modern vlogging look, okay? All right, this, this is your Nifty 50. Do not use this for vlogging. It'll be shaky, it'll be unstable, and nobody wants to see your face up this close if it can even focus that close. So 50 millimeter lenses, not for vlogging. We interrupt this program with a quick note that all of the lenses are in relation to crop sensor cameras, which are your entry level Nikons, Canons, and Sonys. If you're shooting with a Panasonic, you gotta do the MFT calculation on the bottom to get a lens that would be the same width. If you're using a full frame camera, you're maybe not watching this video, or you are because you find me entertaining and funny and handsome or something like that, but you guys know how to do the conversion. But this is aimed primarily at people kind of starting out, and most people are shooting with crop sensor cameras so it's related to that, okay? Convert away with the numbers in the bottom. Okay, bye. And this, this is, this is what I'm using, the, the douchey, filmmaky, ultra-fast, wide-angle prime lens. What that means is this goes all the way down to f1.4. It's a 16 millimeter Sigma lens, and you can get different kind of various ones for whatever camera body system you're on, but it is the ultra-blurry background bokeh champion of the world that's also amazing at low light. Primarily, I would say for storytellers because you're really focused on my face and you're, you're not focused 
on the blurry background. The other thing too is anything that I happen to decide to turn it on, like lenses on a table, do you see how blurry that background is? Oh, it just makes it so delicious. And so if you're trying to, you know, tell stories, get that cinematic B-roll, this lens can kind of do it all. So amazing, right? Well, there's a couple of downsides to it. One is they're typically heavy. Like my arm is kind of going, ooh, because they got to stuff a lot of glass to be able to do that. That also comes with the heaviness of your wallet because they're typically expensive. They're also not image stabilized. So they can be kind of shaky because they're not as wide. No image stabilization. My camera happens to have in-body image stabilization. So it helps with that. <sighs> and finally, oh, sorry you guys, I'm, I'm just so tired holding this. Finally, the focusing on this, if you don't have an amazing focusing camera, i.e. a Canon with dual pixel or a new Sony, good luck trying to get this thing to keep your face in focus all of the time. And the camera will be constantly hunting trying to do it. But, you know, these cameras can do it. So, so that's, that's an amazing thing. Oh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's recap here, but I, I gotta go set this down. All right, so moral of the story is, at the end of the day, whether you wanna use a kit lens or the ultra wide angle lens or the ultra fast lens, it, it really doesn't matter because it's story, you guys. Story is what will carry it, but every single lens has trade-offs and you just pick the one you think is maybe most akin to your style or what you wanna do. And honestly, like, at the end of the day, buy a lens, try it out. If it doesn't work, return it. If you bought it used, sell it. Try something else, just challenge your own creativity. Top tip though, is if you're shooting with either the kit lens or the ultra wide angle lens, grab the nifty 50, 50 millimeter. It's a 1.8 on Canon and Nikon and Sony, and that's a 25 millimeter F1.7 on Panasonic. It allows you to shoot that cinematic B-roll where the subject is in focus and the background is blurry. And it really gives you some more creativity and drive without being super expensive. These are usually kind of 150-ish dollars to maybe 250 depending on the system. Not that much and gives you a completely different look than you know what these are gonna give you. So that's a top tip. At the end of the day, pick what works for you, work on your storytelling and you'll be good, but hopefully that was helpful for you. If uh, you like that video, Hit, hit the like button, subscribe if you want, please, please. No, it's fine. Do whatever you want. Anyway, I'm Justin. Thanks for watching.